Rusty Greer. Welcome to the booth on the, the 17th anniversary of a pretty big day in Ranger history. Yeah, it, uh, matter of fact, when I got the, got the message they wanted me to come up here and relive it, I was like, wow, 17 years. Somebody's getting old around here, you know? <laughs> Well, everybody up here, but uh, of course, we're talking about the Kenny Rogers perfect game, July 28th, 1994, first year of the ballpark, and uh, you were in center field that night. Uh, one thing that uh, people probably remember most is the final out of that game because you had to range over, first of all, to make that great diving catch, and then you also made uh, the catch on the, the 27th and final out. Well, that ball there, that ball there, I catch it over my head, and it was almost missed. <laughs> I was uh, I was so excited. The other one was probably easier because you're either going to catch it or you're not, but that one, that one's a give me. You're supposed to catch it. And uh, Wait, Did you misjudge it a little bit? Well, you know what? If, if you look at this facade right here, it's it's when the balls are rubbed up, and, and you see outfielders early in the game here where it looks like they get fooled on a ball. Yeah. Um, the ball gets lost in that facade for a split second. Uh -huh. And... If you keep staring at it, it'll come out. But uh, sometimes you, you won't know as well as I do that a split second can be the difference in a catch and, or, or a hit. And uh, sure. that ball got lost, and I, I stood there and said, it's coming out, it's coming out somewhere, and there it was. And, and it well, was what, a time, what a time for Ooh. that to happen, too. Huh? I know. When did it dawn on you that Kenny Rogers had that kind of stuff that night? Um, when he struck out, I want to say Spike Owen in either the first or I don't know when it, it was early. He threw a breaking ball, a 3-2 breaking ball to Spike Owen, and it snapped, and I said, man, Kenny's got good stuff tonight. And um, then, but you know what the pitch of the game was to me? It was the seventh inning. Um, Jim Edmonds, 3-2, and two, he throws him a changeup, and he swings through it. 3-2 wow. and changeup in the seventh inning of a perfect game. And uh, that was the pitch of the game. It was, it was gutsy, and it was probably the pitch that needed to be made. But uh, I don't know if I could have done it. Well, you know, early in the game is one thing, but seventh inning, everyone knows seventh what's inning, going on. Yeah. <laughs> yep. What was it like in the dugout between innings? Uh, your typical, uh, you know, Kenny wasn't one to separate himself or anything like that. And uh, we just went about our normal business. And um, yeah, I want to say that Jose Canseco or somebody was kind of talking about it and that kind of stuff. But um, it was it was normal business as usual. And, and uh, when I really realized it was about the sixth inning, um, I realized he hadn't given up a hit, and then all of a sudden the crowd's on their feet. And with every pitch, if it's a ball, the umpire was getting booed. With every pitch, it was, it was a strike. They were screaming for him. And um, about the eighth inning, um, the crowd went berserk one time, and it, it was it was probably the loudest I've ever heard this ballpark. Um, even playoffs, except for the World Series last year, and when they beat the Yankees to go to the World Series. Um, but it was uh, something I won't forget. Definitely one of the great moments in Rangers history. The very first year of the ballpark, 17 years ago tonight. Here's Joe Maurer who grounded his short his first time up. Matt Harrison's allowed only one hit, and that was a two-out single in the third by their number nine batter, Matt Tolbert. Rusty, uh, you're also here to talk about what's coming up uh, next Friday, August 5th at noon at the Arlington Convention Center, honoring Kenny Rogers. That is the Rangers Hall of Fame luncheon. Kenny, uh, Kenny got inducted this year, and, and uh, congratulations to him. Uh, he's well deserved. He uh, he uh, probably one of the greatest pitchers in Rangers history, and um, deserves to be in. And, and I'm looking forward to seeing him. I haven't seen him in a while, and going to lunch and seeing a lot of people. Tickets still available. Log on to TexasRangers.com and uh, come out and join that stellar group. Rusty, it's been 17 years since that game. You played on a couple of really good Ranger teams. Do you stay in contact with any of your old teammates? Do you see them very often? Uh, there, there's a, a group that stayed in the in the North Texas area. Um, Bobby Witt and Kenny Hill and Jeff Russell and a lot of those guys on the 96, 97, the late 90s teams. Mm -hmm. um, I see them quite a bit. Um, I still chit chat with Will uh, every so often. Um, and that's about it. Most of the guys that stay stay around here. Of course, Darren, uh, I see him quite a bit. But he's still he's, he's now how still many playing. how many years were you and Darren roommates? We started off in 1990, I believe, 91, somewhere in there. For you got, three you or guys four were years. actually roommates, we were roommates when you didn't have to be roommates, <laughs> that's right? right? That's right. That's right. I mean, all uh, the players, if you wanted, had right. a single room. Right. So it's uh, 
I've known him, well, I've known him since 1990, and we were roommates for a while. And uh, I used to have, I used to get up and get him water in Arizona, and we were snoring all night long. <laughs> <laughs> Secrets can be told now. <laughs> This uh, slowed down for the last out, so this was in doubt right until it's in your glove. Right huh? there, right. You see how I start back on it? Yes. I, I stop and pause for a second, and I start back on it. There it is. It came out. <laughs> <laughs> and you know who hit that ball, right? Gary D. Sarcina. Was it? Yeah. Rex and Hudler. Who hit, who hit the line drive before it? Rex Hudler. That's, that's the one I was yeah, thinking Rex of. Hudler. Rex Hudler. Yeah. That's right. You know, the next day of batting practice, he came up, and, and he was talking to Jerry Naren. He said, Jerry, I just made this young man's career. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was the other way around. I'd forgotten that. Rex hit the one before it. Matt Harrison uh, with an impressive strikeout looking for Maurer. Two outs here in the fourth. What was the closest ball to being a hit in that game? You know, you know, Tom, there was there was a lot of good plays. I just made that one there in the ninth. Uh, Dean Palmer made a great play on a ball that came up on him coming in, in on the grass. Um, uh, Esteban Beltre threw a ball across the diamond to Will, who had to stretch way wide to get it. Uh -huh. um, Line drive, and Andy Chavez can't run that one down off the wall. And Kadir has a two out double. Second base hit allowed by Harrison. Juan actually made a nice running play in the left center field gap. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a, there was a bunch of them, there was right? a bunch of plays, and uh, I was just fortunate enough to be there at the end. But I tell you this, uh, about the eighth inning, you know how you always hear as a kid, you know, you got to want the ball hit to you, want to hit to you. I can guarantee you there was eight guys in that field that we didn't want that ball anywhere close to. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good, but it's not really reality. Not in that it? game. <laughs> so when you saw those two coming to you, it was there just a frozen split second of panic and then instinct takes over and you just make the play. The first one, no. Uh, the second one, I won't call I won't say panic, but when I lost that ball, there was, you know, if, if this ball doesn't get caught, uh, I'm in trouble, but the first one, it was either you go and you dive and you catch it or you don't, but I made my mind up on that ball I dove for that I was diving for this ball if I was 20 feet from it um, because I can't let it drop without some sort of effort, and uh, it hung up just long enough for me to get there. History was preserved. Strike one to Kubel. Thrown out by Tori Alba and a little dribbler his first time up. So again, uh, the Rangers Hall of Fame luncheon Friday, August 5th, noon at the Arlington Convention Center. Rusty and Tom will be there honoring Kenny Rogers. Many other Ranger greats. Nolan Ryan, of course. Rumor has it David Clyde even. I don't know. I heard David, possibility. I heard, yeah, I heard David was coming back. There's been a lot of great memories of Ranger baseball. One of the for people that go back far enough was David Clyde's first game here right out of high school. At the old stadium, first one of the few sellouts we had way back then. That was the first sellout, and it, it was seen at the time as saving the franchise. Yeah, I mean, that that single game gate was enough probably, to ensure that they'd stay here at least for the rest of the year. Yeah, probably close, but every time he pitched after that, it was a much bigger crowd than would have been normal. Back then, if there was 10,000 people, everyone felt it was a big crowd. That was against the Twins. Yeah. 2-1 pitch, Cruz comes in to make the catch. And that takes care of the Twins fourth. And um, great visiting with you and reminiscing, you. Rusty. We'll I look forward it. to uh, yes, next sir. Friday. See you next Friday, Thanks. Rusty.